Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to your first Roblox Lua GUI scripting tutorial. So this video is just going to be an introduction of different kinds of GUIs, maybe a couple things on what we're going to go over in the future. And I just want to note that if you guys want to know how to do something specific with GUIs, then you can just post in comments maybe, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can with an answer or maybe even a video on it. <clears throat> so let's get started the most common types of GUIs that you'll see in games obviously are where are they? Let's type screen GUIs and that's obviously a GUI that is on your screen as opposed to on a brick or something which is a surface GUI which I'll go over in the future well no in just a few minutes actually so in a screen GUI there are several elements you can put into it which can also be used in surface GUIs but I'll just demonstrate them here first one a frame a frame is used to organize the elements inside of a GUI so let's go down here we have three things we can put into this a text label a text button and a text box and when you mouse over them here in the advanced objects browser you can see a little description of them text label is a GUI object containing text, a button is... it froze. Okay, a, a button containing text, which is sort of just the same thing, what they just said, and a text box is a text entry box. A button, uh, that description is kind of inaccurate. A button is a button, something happens when you click on it. So, if we want to put one of these in our frame, we can double click, put a text label in there, we can put a text button in there, they'll all, when you insert them, they'll all look this way, and then you can just cust click on them and in properties, customize them whatever way you want. <coughs> uh, we'll also go over a lot of GUI properties in this series, and when you mouse over these properties, you see there's also a description of them there. Um, so, an element doesn't have to be inside a frame always for it to appear on your screen but it does need to be inside of a screen GUI so it's visible um, starter GUI that's whatever's replicated into your players player GUI upon joining the game and spawning I'll show you press F6 to test play solo go to players see player 1 you have player GUI right here. And uh, this thing called control GUI, that's uh, that's like one of Roblox's core script thingies, uh, so we don't need to mess with that. <coughs> and then here's our GUI named screen GUI with our text button in it. If we take that button out, it's invisible. So you always want to keep it inside of a screen GUI for it to be visible. Um, yeah, so uh, text label. A text label just, it's a label, nothing happens when you click on it. I don't think it even has all those clicking events attached to it. So you can't do much of this unless you just want to display text like a notification or something. But <clears throat> a text button, there's an event called mouse button one click, and I hope you remember events from my first. Roblox uh, scripting series. I covered events in that, so if you don't understand events, you'll really need to go back and watch that tutorial for a full understanding. So this has an event called mouse button one click, which happen or which fires when you click the button. Um, by the way, if you wanted to test your GUIs just in your edit window by clicking on them or whatever, you can't do that. You have to go into uh, you have to start server or play solo just a fair warning uh, so yeah you can make things happen when your mouse enters a button or clicks on it or whatever you need it to do and then a text box uh, oops a text box is like it said a data entry field so let's say you want someone to put in their name, you can just 
just write recurring. You can click it, type your name, press enter, and that fires an event called focus lost, which is also very useful. So that's a data entry field. You can edit the text that displays there. So like, enter your name here. Oops. You can add that. And then like anything else in your Explorer, your workspace, or whatever, you can add a name to it. <coughs> that goes for any bricks or GUI elements or, or whatever. So a frame that doesn't really have any events attached to it because it's just there to hold all your other stuff. It says a container object used to lay out other GUI objects. So hopefully that explains that. Um, let's see. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what a surface GUI is. I'm gonna get a nice big brick here. Move it up there. Rotate it. Uh, oops. There we go, we have it selected, so now we're gonna insert a surface GUI into it. <clears throat> so, you see, once we insert it, we don't really see anything on it, but we see all these properties under Surface GUI. Uh, there's the active property, which you can toggle on and off. That means it's a bool value, true or false. That just dictates whether it's showing or not, or anything inside of it is active. Uh, or no, that's the enable property. Come to think of it, I don't remember what active does. We'll go back to that, maybe. Uh, the name, tool punch through distance. I'm not quite sure what that does either. I might elaborate on that in the comment section if you guys need me to. So just drop a comment if you want me to elaborate on that. I can do a little search on the wiki. Then you have um, the canvas size and the face. These are two important properties. So we have <clears throat> like any 3D object uh, or shape, it'll have faces. This brick has faces. It has this face, which I think is the top. Uh, this face, which is probably the front because of how I resize it. It has all these faces. And if we go to surface key, we can select what face we want the, the surface key to display on. So first, <clears throat> Uh, we have the canvas size 800 by 600 we can edit that later maybe so the surface key it's like a screen GUI nothing's gonna show unless you add something to it so let's add a text label it's uh, on the front face so I think that's down here no where's it at oh here it is a tiny little text label there this is why we have to edit the canvas size uh, no, we need to edit the text label size, actually. <clears throat> it's size 200, 0, 200, 0, 050. Um, scale and offset are also two very important things that I'm going to have to go over pretty soon. So, I'm not going to elaborate on what this does yet, but maybe if you're smart you'll figure it out. I'm going to set its size to 1010 and oh, control Z to undo you see it's small again control Y to redo then you see it's big again covering the whole canvas of this bricks face um, first I'm gonna try to set it to the top face okay there we go now we can see it better and now it's sideways so I'm gonna have to rotate it so we can see it even better okay so here we have the surface key and the text label inside of it. Um, a text label here works like it does on a screen GUI. You can edit all the properties of it and stuff. Um, so a surface GUI <coughs> is for convenience. You might want to display like a message board across a sign post or maybe have a button where someone clicks something, something happens. That's something important I need to go over. Uh, buttons in surface GUIs. Make it big again. So, 
I'll insert a script. Script.param. Mouse button one click. Connect function. Then print hello world. <clears throat> so I talked about the mouse button one click function earlier. That fires when you click on a text button. So let's see if it prints hello world. F6. Gonna open up the developer console. Let's see if it prints prints hello world. So since we're we were just in a play solo mode, everything was local, so nothing was on the server. I'll just press F7 to start up a server. We were in the client just then, but now we have this window labeled server, and we have the client window here called player1. Move that to the side again. We just clicked it, nothing happened. Nothing's happening when we click this. And the reason for that is when you have a text button on a surface GUI and you have a script inside of it that does something when you click it for instance it won't fire because you need to set the Adorni of the text button first press F1 to open up the wiki um, surface GUI. GUI surface GUIs must be descendants of player GUI in order to know the player who is interacting with it. So what that is saying is <clears throat> if you guys don't understand the term descendant here I'll explain it. So by now you guys should know the system system of parents and children. Um, yeah I'm not gonna bother to explain that but you see all these things here. We have players dot player one and all these things inside of the player. So these are all children of the player. Say that uh, we already had a screen GUI with a text label in there before, but it gets moved to workspace or whatever reason, <clears throat> for whatever reason. That's now a descendant of the player's player GUI. Even though it's not there anymore and it's not a child, it's now a descendant because it was there at one point. So, back to the page. Surface GUIs must be descendants of player GUI in order to know the player who is interacting with it. And that sort of makes sense, because how can it know who's interacting with it um, when it doesn't come from the player itself? Uh, when you have a click detector, you can detect the player who interacted with it, but you shouldn't use that for surface GUIs, really. Unless you're trying to make a mouse enter mouse leave event then it's necessary but might go over that later so I'm gonna show you what you need to do to interact with a text button or a text box uh, on a surface GUI <coughs> so I'm to start a GUI I'm gonna insert a local script and we're gonna put the surface GUI in uh, server storage. Now we'll put it in replicated storage in case it needs to get replicated across clients many times. Um, so we have this starter GUI. What we need to do is set the Surface GUI's Adorni. You see that before when it's in the part there's no Adorni. So an Adorni is when is whatever it's attached to basically. Uh, so it's like it's not attached to anything when we just have it on the part but in our local script and I don't think it needs to be a local script but I would just make it one anyway because that's me we're gonna say game dot replicated storage dot uh, will wait for child surface GUI uh, then dot adorni equals game dot workspace dot part so what we just did is we waited for the child called surface GUI in replicated storage, game.replicated storage, and we set its Adorni <coughs> to the path game.workspace.part. So we still have that what was it not opening? Okay, there we go. Studio's been weird lately like that. Uh, so we can open up the script, it still has the mouse button one click event in it. Let's 
F6 and test. No, we need to F7 and test because this way there's a server and not everything is local. Silly me. Open up that. Oh no, it didn't work. I'm gonna go to the output and see what's wrong. Oh, I know why it didn't work. It was because Surface GUI still was not a descendant of the player GUI. So that's why we need to keep it in starter GUI. Uh, so it gets replicated to the player GUI. And then, you know, it'll be a descendant. Because everything in starter GUI gets replicated to player GUI. So we're just going to leave it there. And since it's not in replicated storage anymore, we can say script.parent wait for child since the you know the script's parent is starter GUI, <coughs> GUI GUI I don't know why I pronounce it so many different ways it's annoying I'm gonna insert a folder and put it in a folder because that's just good organizational practice what a folder does is absolutely nothing at all except it organizes all the stuff you need to store wherever it's kinda like a frame in that way I guess except you know a folder doesn't show it all um, so script.parent.folder wait for child surface GUI adorni is game.workspace.part let's test that's weird Folder is not a valid member of player GUI. Okay. Script.parent wait for child folder. <coughs> I already explained in a previous tutorial, I think, what wait for child does. It just uh, waits for a child of whatever name you you put in the in there to appear uh, for the rest of the code in that script to run. So, uh, open up developer console, see if it works. Nope. Oh, wait, I think we need to go to the server. Yeah, uh, in the server output, and I'll say hello world three times because we just clicked it three, now four times. And, you know, it'll say it again. So now that's working. Yay, yeah, us. Um, so. I think that's all the information I'm gonna give away on GUIs for now. I'm gonna try to find a first topic to make the series on, the first actual tutorial of the series on. I actually just explained a lot of information there that I didn't mean to, <laughs> that I didn't plan on explaining. So uh, I'll see you guys later, probably upload another tutorial maybe later today or in the next few days. I don't know. Post in the comments if you guys want to see anything in specific. I'm out.